The purpose of this video is to go through the five amendments that were recently announced to Regulation X, which is CFPB's kind of big servicing guidelines around how to help homeowners who are trying to transition off of these COVID forbearance plans and avoid foreclosure. If you're a subscriber to my page, it's good to see you. Um, if not, subscribe, like the video, ask me a question, leave me a comment. I always love hearing from you guys and I try to get back to you as soon as possible. So the first thing to understand is CFPB is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They are a regulatory agency. They regulate banks that have more than $10 billion in assets. So that sounds like a lot, but most of the big banks, the names that we all know, probably the lenders that you have, SPS, SLS, Bank of America, PHH, New Res Financial. I mean, I could go on and on. I could do that all day, actually. Um, but most of the big banks, uh, are regulated by the CFPB. The CFPB does not regulate very small lenders. So if you have like a local credit union or a really small bank, these might not necessarily apply to you. So kind of the first thing you wanna to do to figure out if these protections apply is figure out if you have a big bank or a small bank and then figure out if they're regulated by the CFPB. The first amendment that they announced says that they've issued what they're calling a temporary procedural safeguard against foreclosure. It's temporary because the procedural safeguard only extends until January 1st, 2022. So it's September now, so we have a few more months till the end of the year, basically. And the procedural safeguard says that for the mortgage servicers that the CFPB has regulatory authority over, they cannot issue the first foreclosure notice for 120 days. So it's not another moratorium. It's not just a flat out like no foreclosures, but they're saying that if they are, if you are a mortgage servicer and you have these homeowners that have been struggling with COVID forbearances and not making payments, that through January 1st, 2022, they will not be issuing the first foreclosure notice for 120 days. What's important to understand is it applies to people if they were delinquent on or after March first 2020 so march 1st 2020 is when most of the government investors and the cfpb feel like the pandemic started march 1st 2020 is when covid started and so if you have a delinquency that was in place prior to march 1st 2020 you are not protected by this so they view this protection as for people who are affected by the pandemic only and people who have these big banks that are regulated by them so if you happen to just randomly miss two payments before March 1st, 2020, you need to be reaching out to your bank and talking to them about what's going on because you might not be protected to the, by this. It only protects people who are delinquent because of COVID and they've determined that March 1st, 2020 is the date in which everything started. Like I said, it's only good through January 1st, 2022. So we have until the end of the year with this protection in place. The bank can proceed to foreclosure if they have been trying to contact a borrower and the borrower is not responsive. So if you did not take one of these COVID forbearance plans and the bank has been trying to call you and you haven't been responding to them, the CFPB has said that these temporary protections may not apply to you. This one is really interesting because it's a very unclear what responsiveness means. Banks always get away with things based on responsive, right? Sometimes banks will have their collection department call you at like 2 a.m at night every night and then they get to like mark in their system oh we've made seven phone calls to you but they really haven't and they're calling at weird times or they call you like during your work hours every single day when you really can't answer the phone and then they might be able to mark you as unresponsive in their system and proceed with foreclosure so the best thing you can do around this one is to make sure that you take it upon yourself to be communicative with your bank and reach out in a pri priority manner so that you don't get labeled as one of these unresponsive borrowers because per this regulation they might be able to avoid the foreclosure protection if you're unresponsive. So take that on yourself. Don't get labeled an unresponsive borrower. If the property is abandoned, the foreclosure protection doesn't apply to you. That's pretty clear. Um, like if the home is vacant and you just pieced out of there, they don't. They can still issue the first foreclosure notice. And the other kind of exception to the foreclosure protection in place is if you've completed a loss mitigation application and been kind of denied or not offered a loss mitigation option or not accepted one. So if you have applied for something, like for example, a loan modification, and the bank has deemed the file complete and they've gone through the review, and 
and you're not qualifying for anything for whatever reason, the bank can move forward with foreclosure. So this is another kind of iffy one, right? You want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to get yourself through review and to get onto one of these COVID transition plans. There are tons of other videos on this page related to what the different options are, how to get them, how to know which ones apply to you, but be a little bit careful, you know, because the bank is allowed to kind of move to foreclosure if they feel like they've done everything they can to complete the review. So that's kind of the first amendment announced by the CFPB. The second thing they said is they're going to do everything to encourage the mortgage servicers they regulate to make the process for transitioning off of the COVID forbearance plans streamlined. So streamlined means no documents or less documents. This is going to be an interesting one too because this is typically the one where there's a big gap between what the government regulators say and then what actually gets enforced by the mortgage servicers. I do this job every day and I can tell you right now that different lenders are still requesting different partial documents for different options. So the CFPB is saying the process to get off of one of these Coven's forbearance plans and onto a new agreement where you can be current should be easy and should be streamlined, meaning there should be no or less documents, but we kind of have to see case by case bank by bank how that actually goes um, what they are saying though is there should be no paperwork for a partial claim or a deferment or a loan modification especially if it's Fannie Mae and a flex modification if you have questions about what I'm saying watch the videos on this page related to those investors Okay, number three, the mortgage servicers must communicate with the borrowers. So basically what they're saying here is the lenders need to up their level of communication. They need to be reaching out to them um, and offering them all of the options and talking to you guys about what's available to you and just being overly communicative. If you're in, if you are in a forbearance, Sorry, if you're in default but you're not in a forbearance and you're still within the time frame to get one with your bank, the bank needs to be calling you and offering you that. It's really important to the CFPB that the lenders be upping the communication. So if you're one of these people who might still be able to jump on a forbearance plan with your specific bank or investor, they should be calling you and letting you know that that's an option for you. Number four also relates to communication. Um, basically, the CFPB is telling the mortgage lenders that they must contact you no later than 30 days before the end of your forbearance. So if your forbearance plan, you know, ended at the end of August, you should have been contacted, you know, middle of July if this amendment was in place. Moving forward, they need to be contacting you proactively. That's important to the CFPB. And then uh, number five just kind of clarifies what the CFPB views as the COVID time period. We know it starts on March 1st, 2020. We already talked about that. The end date is February 24th, 2021. So if you're one of these people who had a hardship within that amount of time, these protections apply to you. So this is the source material for this. The actual amendments are in the link underneath the description box. If you want to really get into it and read those guidelines there, you should do that. Um, otherwise, let me know if you have questions or comments. Everything is really new. All of this was just announced on the 31st of August. So we'll kind of see how it's going and I'll keep trying to post updates here as we see how things go.